This presentation has been brought to you by Michigan State University, America's premier land-grant institution. 150 years of advancing knowledge, transforming lives. Someday, your roof could look a lot like this. In fact, it's cool in more ways than one. It seems everybody's going green these days. And when you're talking about buildings, it only makes sense to start at the top, to start with the roof. Basically what a green roof does, I mean, it helps cool this building in, in three ways. One, your media layer there acts as another insulation layer. The plant canopy shades the roof from the sun. And then also you have transpirational cooling as those plants transpire, it's basically cooling that roof. It might sound a little technical, but basically it just means growing plants on the roof and growing plants on the roof helps the environment. Smart, right? To me, it seems like a, a no-brainer. I mean, the space is not being used. I mean, look at all the roofs we have. People, are we're not going away. We're going to continue building. We're going to build buildings. We're going to build roads, parking lots, and so forth. Um, storm water is, is a major problem. Uh, because of those impervious surfaces. Parking lot or a roof, it basically runs off instantaneously. And then you have a whole stormwater infrastructure system which has to deal with that. So one thing that green roofs does is it holds stormwater basically and doesn't let it run off. It's an idea that's caught on in Europe, especially in Germany. And not only do these green roofs help prevent things like the warming of the environment, they can help you save some cold, hard cash. Instead of a roof lasting 20 years, a green roof can hang in there for 60 years or even more. In Germany, they actually have a green roof that's been there for 90 years and they have not had to replace it. And just so you know, even the dogs are going green. I have a dog house at home that's a green roof, so we built one for our student show and the person that bought that liked it so much and he's a developer that he's actually building a green roof on a new condo in East Lansing, but it all came back to that doghouse. The research got started here at Michigan State when the Ford Motor Company wanted some questions answered and, of course, they came to MSU. They wanted to know about the potential for green roofs. From there, the research just kept going here on campus. The Ford Motor Company has been our one of our major uh, funding uh, uh, sources. He says the future is bright for this, especially in urban areas, industrial areas, not just homes. Cities present the biggest challenges for energy. They have what are known as urban heat islands. Well, the city of Atlanta's uh, urban heat island, it's like 10 degrees warmer, you know, right in the city as is in the suburbs. Green roofs can help douse the heat. Some American cities are getting on board with the idea. Chicago is by far the leader in green roofs in the United States. They're developing standards and guidelines to promote green roofs in Chicago. He says that could help a lot if cities and communities step up and try to plant the seeds of change by coming up with some incentives to going green. When we first started talking about green roofs, it was always like, what are you doing? You know, no one had a clue what it was, and I think that's changed quite a bit. This study here was installed in 2005. Roof research means test areas where they look at green and traditional roofs. Sensors in each layer of the roofs tell them what's going on with the temperature. On a hot summer day, you see the temperature fluctuation on the non-green roof is, you know, gets very warm and then cools off, and that constant expansion and contraction is what causes the roof to fail. Whereas under the green roof, it basically pretty flat, stays ambient temperature. They've been at this for years. Along with the temperature variations, they're also looking at things like how green roofs take carbon out of the air and make it cleaner. Plants take out the carbon dioxide that's in the air, use it to create sugars. And what we want to know is how much carbon can a green roof store? Got to kind of start clipping kind of high. She chooses a chunk of vegetation and cuts out a sample. That'll be compared to a sample from a non-green roof. Periodically we come up here and we harvest the biomass so we can analyze how much carbon is in that biomass at any given time. Eventually, this could lead to helping offset the carbon footprint of buildings. That's an unknown, something for the future, but they're working on it here at MSU. It's just one more thing to add to the equation where I'm going to build a building, do I put a green roof on it or not? And of course, with energy prices keep going up and up, green roofs are becoming more and more feasibly economically. There are the things you can gauge, and there are the intangibles, all the small things that can add up to big demand. Less demand for air conditioning, you're going to have cleaner air, less ozone, uh, pollution. Those are the ones that are easy to measure. Then you have things like aesthetics. Studies have shown that people recover more quickly when they're around green and plants. You might not think of this as an agricultural effort, 
But make no mistake, it's rooted in the way we grow things. I think agriculture in a whole is changing immensely. You know, it's not just growing corn and wheat and green roofs is just another you know, part of that. The thing with uh, green roofs is it's, it involves a lot of other people, say in engineering, building construction. It's not just you know, going out in the field and planting you know, corn or something like that. There's a, more things involved. I just think green roofs are really neat. It's a great way to bring nature back to the urban environment. And that is an idea just about everyone seems to like these days. The preceding program was produced by Michigan State University in association with the